So, we've seen the Snapdragon variant of the Galaxy S10 slightly outperforming the Exynos variant in daylight camera department. But what about low light performance? Is it any different between the two chipsets? Find out next. Talking selfie photos, now we know that the US variant of the S10 has a different sensor, made by Sony, and we can easily see that it outperforms the isocell sensor of the Exynos S10 in low light. Photos come out sharper, with better fine detail, but also have a slightly brighter exposure with more realistic color tones. The Exynos S10 doesn't take bad selfies in low light by any means, but still, Snapdragon seems better. Moving on to the ultra wide camera, as a general rule, it's known that you better avoid this camera in low light, and in our tests, all the photos were made in real night conditions, sometimes even close to pitch black environments. Nevertheless, here are the photos. We can spot some slight differences in color processing, the Exynos S10 leaning more to that well-known Samsung yellow color cast, while the Snapdragon compensates that yellow hue better, managing to deliver more natural colors. Also, the exposure is again slightly brighter, and the noise reduction algorithm seems to be ever so slightly less aggressive, preserving some of the fine details in dark areas, but with the cost of some added noise. If you'd ask me, I will take Snapdragon's processing any day for a slightly better color and exposure. Switching to the opposite side of the shooting range, the 2x telephoto camera of the Galaxy S10 variants deliver almost the same pictures. As a side note, this camera is also best avoided in ultra low light conditions as pictures come out soft and noisy, with much less detail and darker exposure than the photos made with the main camera. So, in low light, it is best to shoot with the main 12 megapixel sensor and crop the photo to magnify it to your liking. But what about the main sensor? the one that is most capable in low-light situations. Well, even if it's the same exact isocell sensor, even here we can see some slight differences thanks to a better ISP integrated in the Snapdragon chipset. Photos have better exposure and dynamic range with more details in the shadow areas compared to the Exynos. The differences are not major, but still, if you put the picture side by side, it is easily noticeable. Also, as with the ultra-wide cameras, the Snapdragon chipset delivers a slightly better color balance, avoiding the extreme yellowish cast of the Exynos S10 main camera. What the Exynos chipset has going for it is that in some photos, there's slightly less noise. Now it's a matter of preference. Do you prefer a noisier photo but with some added detail, or do you prefer a cleaner photo but also slightly softer and with washed out details? Again, I would prefer the former. It's worth mentioning that the differences in low light between the two Galaxy S10 variants with all three cameras are not anything major, and you can easily manage to reproduce the Snapdragon photos with the Exynos phone if you are willing to spend 2 minutes in Photoshop or Snapseed for each photo, and vice versa if you better like the Exynos photos. That being said, enjoy the rest of this video, and until next time, this is Pixel Peepers, signing out.